Hello everybody, I just want to do a really quick video today. So I got a question in the Discord chat, which if you are not on our Discord, you should be. There are quite a few very smart individuals on there answering questions, driving discussions. It's a great place to be, check it out. But the question is, why, uh, why is it that we have to do the sum of the losses before we back propagate? And this is actually a really good question, and there are two parts to the answer. So the first part is that if we take a look at the network architecture, we can see that the policy and value function, this is an actor critic network, if that wasn't clear from the context, uh, the policy and value function share lower layers. Those lower layers serve as the interface with the environment, and then it branches out at the pi and the v level. So why is it that we need to add those two losses together? Well, the actor and the critic are in fact distinct outputs, but they share those two common layers. So you kind of have a branch point here where it goes into the actor and the critic. And so the derivative of the actor with respect to the critic's parameters, the layer of the critic's parameters that is, will be zero because there's no dependence there. However, they do have shared common gradients at the lower layers. Now, this wouldn't be a problem to calculate those gradients in any order you want, as Mr. CIA Glow in the Dark points out. Uh, that's actually no problem to calculate gradients in any order you want. Uh, it's, it's perfectly valid to calculate them in whatever order. However, in PyTorch, they have the convention that once they back propagate one of the losses, so if you say after loss dot backward, then it throws out those gradients. And this is a problem because it throws out the gradients at the lower layers, which are shared with the critic. So if we were to comment that out and attempt to do that, and then run our main program, we're going to get an error. And it says, trying to backpropagate through the graph a second time, but the buffers have already been freed. So PyTorch has a convention that they chuck out the gradients once they do one backpropagation. And so it chucks out gradients that it needs for the calculation of the second loss function. Uh, you can fix this by, uh, by specifying retain graph equals true when you call the backprop the first time. However, that's a little bit slower and uh, can lead to uh, my understanding, and this could be wrong, I'm not an expert on PyTorch, but the basic idea is that it will result in an accumulation of gradients over time that slows down future calculations, which is why they throw them out in the first place. Now, if you have totally separate network architectures, totally separate networks for an actor and a critic that do not share any input layers with the environment, then it's perfectly valid to take the backpropagation of both of those in sequential order rather than adding together their losses. And in fact, I think you'll get a, an error if you try to add the two losses together and backpropagate, though don't quote me on that, I haven't tried it. Okay, so rather than leave us all in mystery and suspense, I decided to go ahead and test that. So what I decided to do is write two separate networks, an actor network with only a policy output, and then a separate critic network with only a value output. Uh, and then the agent class just has a separate actor and a separate critic. And I just changed up function calls to get rid of actor critic and reference actor or critic where appropriate. And then of course in the learn function you need to zero both gradients for both an actor and a critic. And then I'm taking the sum here for the uh, actor and critic loss of back propagating and then doing the optimizer step on both actor and critic networks. So let's exit this and try it again and see what type of error, if any, we get. Uh, of course, I have an issue with, I didn't change one thing, so that's in line 84. It says to actor critic dot device. Let's just say critic device. And let's try it again. So it actually works. Okay, I stand corrected. So actually that works. I'm actually a little surprised, but nonetheless, it works. Uh, it does have enough wherewithal to back propagate through totally separate graphs when you add together the losses. However, if you attempt to um, back propagate losses through networks that share gradients without specifying the retain graph equals true parameter, then it throws out the associated gradients with the second network when it calculates the back propagation of the first network. So I hope that was clear as mud. Now, I don't know if they do this in TensorFlow. I don't play around enough in TensorFlow to know for sure, but in PyTorch anyway, this is the case. And uh, I hope it clears up the mystery of why we have to add the two losses together. I'll see you in the next video.